palatine tonsil so palatine tonsils they are the almond shaped lymphoid masses situated on either side of the on the lateral wall of the oropharynx they are the almond shaped lymphoid masses situated on the lateral wall of the oropharynx coming to the boundaries of the uh, palatine tonsil coming to the boundaries of the palatine tonsil so the palatine tonsil it is so this is the palatine tonsil it is bounded in front by the palatoglossal arch behind by the palatopharyngeal arch it is bounded in front by the palatoglossal arch behind by the palatopharyngeal arch and above by the soft palate where the two arches meet by above by the soft palate where the two arches meet and below we have dorsum of the tongue we, below we have below we have posterior one third of the dorsum of the tongue we have posterior one third of the posterior one third of the dorsum of the tongue so those are the relations of the tonsillar fossa tonsillar fossa so the anti relations is formed by the palatoglossal arch it extends from the soft palate to the tongue and the posterior relation it is uh, behind by the palatopharyngeal arch it extends from the palate to the pharynx and above where the two arches meet at the soft palate and below by the posterior one third dorsum posterior one third of the dorsum of the tongue so these are the relations these are the relations of the Tons, uh, palatine tonsil and coming to the later relations of the palatine tonsil the coming to the later relations means the later relations they form the tonsillar bed the later relations are very important they are formed the tonsillar bed the later relations they are formed by the pharyngobasilar fascia we know that pharyngobasilar fascia is nothing but the submucous coat of the pharynx pharyngobasilar fascia pharyngobasilar fascia and beneath and after the pharyngobasilar from within outwards after that pharyngobasilar fascia we have palatopharyngeus muscle is present palatopharyngeus muscle is a longitudinal muscle of pharynx it occupies the upper and posterior part of the tonsillar bed and beneath that we have superior constrictor muscle in the postero superior part in the we have the superior constrictor muscle in the postero superior part and we have styloglossus muscle in the antero inferior part these structures forms the tonsillar bed so what are the structures forming the tonsillar bed means the tonsil rests on very from within outwards so the palatine tonsil it rests on from within outwards by pharyngobasilar fascia and after the pharyngobasilar fascia we have palatopharyngeus muscle which occupies the upper and posterior part and we have superior constrictor muscle which occupies the postero superior part and styloglossus muscle which occupies the antero inferior part these four structures forms the tonsillar bed so what are the structures forming the tonsillar bed means here is the pharyngobasilar fascia and we have superior constrictor muscle is there and also palatopharyngeus muscle and styloglossus muscle these four structures they form the later relations nothing but the tonsillar bed of tonsillar bed of the palatine tonsil the tonsil rests on these relations so here coming to the again coming to the palatine tonsil it is bounded in front by the palatoglossal arch consists of palatoglossal muscle and behind by the palatopharyngeal arch and apex is formed where the two arches meet and below we have tongue dorsum of the posterior one third of the tongue and coming to the lateral relations the tonsillar bed it is formed from within outwards by pharyngobasilar fascia and palatopharyngeal muscle in the upper end posterior part and superior constrictor muscle in the posterior superior part and styloglossus muscle in the antero inferior part they form the tonsillar bed and coming to the presenting parts of the tonsil tonsil it is having two surfaces medial surface and lateral surface tonsil it is having two surfaces medial surface and lateral surface two borders anterior border and posterior border anterior border and posterior border and two ends upper end and lower end so the tonsil it is having two surfaces this is the medial surface and this is the medial surface here here we have taken the coronal section through palatine tonsil this is the medial surface here and this is also a medial surface and the lateral surface it is here it is having two ends upper end and lower end and it is having two borders anterior border and posterior anterior border it, it is present deep to the 
palatoglossal large, anterior border it is present deep to the palatoglossal large, and posterior border it is present deep to the palatopharyngeal large. So coming to the medial surface. So this is the medial surface. The medial surface is free and it is encroached onto the oropharynx. Though this is the oropharynx. Okay, so the medial surface it is free and the swelling of tonsil occurs onto the medial surface because medial surface we don't have any boundaries in the medial surface and the medial surface is free and it is opens into the oropharynx. So the swelling of the tonsil takes place in the medial surface because the medial surface is free. On the medial surface we will able to see tonsillar pits. What are tonsillar pits means? The tonsil it is lined by stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium. Here the stratified squamous not keratinous epithelium it dips into the lamina propria we call them as pits so the epithelium dips into the lamina propria we call them as pits so on the top of the tonsil on the medial surface of the tonsil we will able to see 10 to 12 tonsillar pits are seen 10 to 12 tonsillar pits are seen on the medial surface of tonsil and also one important cleft is there this is called intratonsillar cleft is present this is the intra one important cleft is present on the upper part of the medial surface we call it as intratonsillar cleft this is the intratonsillar cleft which is present in the upper part of the medial surface it is present in the 40 percent of the individuals it is nothing but a remnant of the second pharyngeal pouch intratonsillar cleft it is remnant of the second pharyngeal pouch so the medial surface it consists of it is free and it is opens into the oropharynx and the swelling of tonsils occurs into the oropharynx. Here on the, on the medial surface we will able to see tonsillar pits are seen. Tonsillar pits is nothing but the epithelium dips into the lamina propria for forming pits. We call it as tonsillar pits. On the medial surface we will able to see on the upper part intratonsillar cleft is there which is a large cleft. It is seen in 40% of individuals which is a remnant of the second pharyngeal pouch usually the tonsils are present in children and in adults they are usually atrophies in adults but they may swell during infections they may swell during infections we call it as tonsillitis and tonsillitis usually there is a lymphoid tissue which acts as defense mechanism but in, in fact some some of sometimes these tonsils get infected the result in tonsillitis which is nothing but the infection of the tonsil which results in the swelling of the tonsil so that about the medial surface of tonsil and coming to the lateral surface of tonsil the lateral surface of tonsil it is related to first a loose areolar tissue is present here it is related to loose areolar tissue consists of paratonsillar veins so these are the paratonsillar veins so these are the paratonsillar veins they are present in the loose area tissue. So, see here is the tonsil and this is the lateral relation and this is the lateral relations of the tonsil. Lateral surface related to the here see the loose area tissue consists of para tonsillar veins and after that we have pharyngobasilar fascia. This is the green level we have represented this with pharyngobasilar fascia with green one. This is the pharyngobasilar fascia. Okay, and after that we have superior constrictor muscle. This is the two other superior constrictor muscles. After that we have superior constrictor muscle. This is the superior constrictor muscle. So here is the superior constrictor muscle, pharyngobasilar fascia, superior constrictor muscle, and we have after that we have buccopharyngeal fascia. This is a loose fascia covers the constrictors of muscle, nothing but the epimysium of the constrictor, epimysium of the constrictor muscle. So, buccopharyngeal fascia consists of pharyngeal plexus of nerves and vessels. So, the lateral surface of the tonsil, it is related to loose areolar tissue, consists of panda tonsillar veins. And after that, we have pharyngobasilar fascia, which is a thick fascia beneath the constrictor muscles. And after that, we have superior constrictor muscle is here and after after that the covering the superior constrictor muscle we have buccopharyngeal fascia this is the buccopharyngeal fascia consists of plexus of nerves and vessels buccopharyngeal fascia consists of plexus of nerves and vessels this is the pharyngobasilar fascia pharyngobasilar fascia 
which is nothing but the submucous layer of the pharynx, which in the pharyngobacillar fascia forms the submucous layer of the pharynx. So, these form the lateral relations and also the palatine artery, this is also the palatine branch of the facial artery and ascending palatine artery, this is the ascending palatine artery and, and palatine branch of the facial artery and tonsillar arteries, they also forms the lateral relation. Here see, this is the facial artery, facial artery gives branches tonsillar artery and palatine branches and here we have another artery called ascending palatine artery, this is the ascending palatine artery, this is the ascending palatine artery, okay, ascending palatine artery they also forms the lateral relations and also the one lateral relation internal carotid artery it also forms the lateral relations of the lateral relations of the lateral surface of the palatine tonsil so the lateral surface it is related to loose area tissue pharyngobacillar fascia after the pharyngobacillar fascia we have superior constrictor muscle after that we have buccopharyngeal fascia consists of plexus of nerves and vessels and after that we have facial artery along with these branches ascending palatine and tonsillar branches and also we have ascending pharyngeal artery which is a branch of external carotid artery and 2.5 centimeters later to the lateral surface we have carotid sheath consists of internal carotid artery along with common carotid artery along with internal carotid artery vagus nerve and internal jugular vein they also come to the uh, related to the lateral surface of the pharynx and it is also related to stylopharyngeus, posterior belly of diagnostic, stylohyoid and styloglossus muscle. It is also related to stylopharyngeus muscle. It is also related to stylopharyngeus muscle, posterior belly of diagnostic, styloglossus, styloglossus muscle and also stylopharyngeus muscle. It is also related Related to all these four muscles. So the lateral surface of the tonsil it is having huge relations, right? So these are the this represent the relations of the lateral surface of the tonsil. And coming to the anterior border, anterior border, I told you already, anterior border, it is present under the cover of palatoglossal arch. And coming to the posterior border, it is present under the cover of palatopharyngeal arch, which consists of muscles of the same name. And coming to the upper end, upper end encloses onto the soft palate. So this is the soft palate. So, this is the soft palate, upper end encroaches onto the soft palate and coming to the lower end, lower end it is attached to the tongue by a ligament called suspensory ligament, suspensory ligament of the tongue, suspensory ligament of the tonsil. So, it is attached to the tongue by a ligament called suspensory ligament of the tonsil. So, upper end it is encroaches onto the soft palate and the lower end it is attached to the tongue by a suspensory ligament of the tonsil. So that's about the surfaces, presenting parts of the tonsil. So medial surface it is having tonsillar pits and intratonsillar cleft is present and medial surface it is free and, is, and it is related to the oropharynx and coming to the lateral surface we have loose areola tissue consists of paratonsillar veins are present, paratonsillar veins are present and after that we have pharyngobacillar fascia and after that we have superior constrictor, buccopharyngeal fascia along with facial artery and its branches, ascending pharyngeal artery, carotid tissue that is contains and also styloglossus, stylopharyngeus, posterior bell of diagnostic and stylohyoid muscles. These form the lateral relations of the lateral surface and coming to the upper end is these enclosure onto the soft palate and coming to the lower end it is it is attached to the tongue by the suspensory ligament of the tonsil those are the relations those are the presenting parts of the tonsil we know that tonsil it is a part of the lymphatic system it is axin it plays an important role in defense mechanism in the tonsil usually it is lined by stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium and the tonsil it dips into the lamina propria and we call it as tonsillar pits and here where the mucus glands the mucus is open and beneath that in the lamina propria we will able to see lymphoid follicles are seen in the tonsil these lymphoid follicles they are arranged we are having the upper part we are having thickly packed and uh, mature lymphocytes at the periphery and lymphoblasts in the center we call it as germinal center so that's about the presenting parts of the tonsil and coming to coming to the blood supply of the tonsil tonsil it is supplied by anterior tonsillar 
posterior tonsillar, superior tonsillar and inferior tonsillar arteries. So coming to the anterior tonsillar arteries, anterior tonsillar arteries they are derived from the lingual artery from the second part. We know that lingual artery it is a branch of external carotid artery right. So external carotid artery Lingual artery is having three parts, first part, second part and third part. From the second part of the lingual artery, anterior tonsillar veins are present. They supply the anterior part of the tonsil. And coming to the posterior tonsillar arteries, posterior tonsillar arteries are derived from the facial artery, which is in turn is a branch of the external carotid artery. From the facial artery, tonsillar and palatine branches arise. Tonsillar branches and pantate branches array, they supply the, they are nothing but the posterior tonsillar arteries. Posterior tonsillar arteries, they are also supplied by the ascending pharyngeal artery. Ascending pharyngeal artery is a branch of the first branch of the external carotid artery. And coming to the superior tonsillar arteries, they are derived from the greater palatine artery, which is in turn is a branch of the maxillary artery. And coming to the inferior tonsillar artery, inferior tonsillar artery, it is derived from the Principal artery it is derived from the facial artery itself. Inferior tonsillar artery it is the main arterial supply of the tonsil. Inferior tonsillar artery which is derived from the directly from the facial artery. The principal artery which is derived from the facial artery that supplies the uh, tonsil. So anterior tonsillar artery supplied by the lingual artery. Posterior tonsillar artery supplied by the ascending palatine, ascending pharyngeal and tonsillar branches. And coming to the uh, superior tonsillar arteries, they are supplied by the greater palatine artery, which is in turn is a branch of the maxillary artery. And coming to the inferior tonsillar arteries, they are supplied by the principal artery from the facial artery. Those supply the arterial supply of the tonsil. And coming to the venous drainage, venous drainage into the paratonsillar veins, which, which drains into the internal jugular veins, which further drains into the internal jugular vein. And lympho, lymph nodes into the jugulodigastric group of lymph nodes. Here the lymph nodes drains into jugulodigastric group of lymph nodes. And one important lymph node is present at the angle of the mandible. This, this is the main principal lymph node of the tonsil. So one important lymph node present at the angle of the mandible, which is the main important lymph node of the tonsil. And uh, coming to the now supply by the glossopharyngeal nerve and also greater and lesser palatine nerves from the pterygo palatine ganglion they supply the nerve supply to the tonsil so the infection of the tonsil we call it as tonsillitis which is more prominent in children and this tonsil usually atrophies in adults so but we can assume the exact size of the tonsil because of its huge uh, identity, in identity because it, it presents some, sometimes an infection of the tonsil occurs it increases in size in adults it atrophies in size so we can't uh, correctly say the exact size of the tonsil so that's about the palatine tonsil which is a lymphoid tissue present in the lateral wall of the oropharynx that's about the palatine tonsil